You've probably seen them in paintings, on stage, or in the movies. Big curly powdered wigs worn by all the fanciest people in Europe. And you might be wondering, how and why did such a strange and specific style become so widespread that seemingly everyone and their mother was wearing one? Why, it all came down to royalty, of course. You see, by the 1500s, a rash of disease swept across Europe. It was the worst epidemic since the Black Death. Those getting sick would suffer from painful sores, rashes, dementia, and, you guessed it, hair loss. And the royalty wasn't immune. Queen Elizabeth in England suffered and famously wore a curly red wig to cover up her patchy hair loss. Then came King Louis XIII of France, who also started wearing a wig as he went bald. The king's fancy false hair became an instant fashion statement. The trend spread to royal courts across Europe, where nobles copied the lavish look. Eventually, anyone who could afford one owned a long, flowing wig. At the time, long, loose locks were all the rage, so anyone losing their hair was risking public ridicule. But a big, fancy hairpiece was a clever way to cover up a problem while looking stylish in the process. Called periwigs, these hairpieces were powdered with starch and scented with orange or lavender. The powder gave the wig its classic off-white look, but they could be tinted lots of other colors too. There were a couple problems. For starters, periwigs weren't exactly cheap. They were hard to make, harder to maintain, super heavy, and not exactly comfortable to wear. Each one was handmade and time-consuming to construct. Your average everyday walking around wig would set you back around 25 shillings. That's about a full week's pay. And some of the biggest and most elaborate creations could cost up to 800 shillings. In fact, the term big wig was coined to describe a snobby person who would buy a big expensive wig. But the demand was strong and wig makers were willing to do whatever it took to keep their money maker on the shelves no matter what the cost. Which led to another major problem with the big business of big wigs. You see, all of these fancy, expensive periwigs were made from human hair, and all that human hair had to come from somewhere. And almost always, that meant it came from the head of a poor person who was paid pennies for their valuable locks, possibly by force. Also, the rich could wear giant, goofy headgear, Thankfully, the trend did die out, and the demand for massive powdered wigs plummeted and never recovered. Nowadays, wigs are made with synthetic hair that are cheaper and much more humane to make. So why were powdered wigs so popular? For the same reason any weird fashion trend takes off. People love to look cool, and what's cool is always changing. So next time you see someone showing off their super expensive clothes, just know it's nothing new.